afternoon, Monsignor. Good afternoon, Father. been here in Tweedside, Father Chisholm? Twelve months. Ah, yes, I remember now. It was your particular wish to return to your native parish. Well, this is also the native parish of His Grace the Bishop. I'm aware that Bishop Neely shares with you the distinction of having been born here. What age are you now, Father? Well, I'm no older than Angus Neely. No doubt, but life has treated you somewhat differently. To be brief, the bishop and I both have the feeling that your long and faithful years should now be recompensed. That you should uh, retire. But I have no wish to retire. I'm sure that you will understand that this has been a somewhat painful experience for me, Father, this week of investigation. I find that I must point out to His Grace certain... Uh, peculiarities in the administration of your parish, which you can scarcely overlook. Peculiarities? Some of your sermons, the advice you give, your approach to certain points of doctrine. Still peculiar after so many years. Here is a remark that you made in Holy Week. All atheists are not godless men. I knew one who I hope may now be in heaven. But he was a peculiar atheist. And then, the good Christian is a good man. But I found that the Confucianist usually has a better sense of humor. When Mrs. Glenn Denning, one of your best parishioners, who naturally cannot help her extreme stoutness, came to you for spiritual guidance, you looked at her and said, eat less, the gates of paradise are narrow. I'm afraid that you've lost your command of souls, Father. I have no wish to command anyone so. Naturally, I don't presume to be your judge. I can only submit my findings to his grace for his consideration in reaching a final decision. Now, if you don't mind, Father, I will go to my room. I shall be leaving the first thing in the morning, and I have work still to do. Uh, would you... Would you be good enough to remind Angus? His grace, I mean, that we were boys together. The bishop has not forgotten. He spoke about it only last week. Well, mention it to him again, will you? Of course. I... I shouldn't like to leave here if it could be helped. Naturally. Good night. But this is my native parish, you know. Good night, Father. Francis Chisholm, his journal, 1878. Nothing could have been more remote from the life I have lived than the beginning of it. My father was a master fisherman in the little village of Tweedside, the finest and most honorable man I have ever known. He was a Catholic as I was. My mother was a Protestant. The words as I write them seem divided, but never were three souls more nearly one. Never were three hearts as happy and as filled with love as ours for each other. We're having company for supper tonight, remember? Polly's coming up from Tynecastle and she's bringing Nora. Nora? What's wrong with Nora, lad? She's a girl. A very proper objection. But you'll have to learn tolerance, laddie. Women can't help it that they are not men. Alec, I wish you'd let one of the other men take the accounts to town. There'll be trouble again. Last week I knocked their heads together. 
And this week I'll do the same if they cross me. To please me, Alex. Like as not, they'll not say a word one way or the other. I'll be back to supper. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, son. I'm sorry, Francie. What did you say? I said, what is it to fear in the town? You and your father are Catholic, son. Some people fear Catholics. Some people hate them. Aye, it is. Well, good night, Buck. Good night, and mind what I tell you, me lad. Be careful. I'll be all right. Do you worry? There goes that dirty papist. We told you Romans come to stay away from this town. It's keeping him. I can't stand it any longer, Paul. I'm going with you. No, Francie. You stay here. with her son. She may need you. Thank you, Laura. Francie! Francie! I don't want anything to happen to him. Hold on to me, Alex. We'll make it home. Nora, I don't want to go in just yet. Let me stay with you. No, please, Nora. I was not related by blood to either Polly, her brother Ned, or Nora. They were distant cousins of my father. They took me to live with them in Tynecastle. Their kindness and affection once more filled me with happiness. 
And as the years went by, I became increasingly satisfied with the fact that Nora was a girl. And my return to college after each vacation became an increasingly difficult parting for both of us. Well, Francis, I'm glad you finally arrived. People were beginning to think Willie was here to see me off. I am, in a way. I want to be sure you go. Hello, Francis, are you sure you have the tickets? Hello, Willie. Hello, Hello. Angus. Hello. You and Francis better get aboard. First thing you know, we'll be standing here talking and you'll miss the train. Well, so it's goodbye again. It'll be Christmas before we know it, and I'll be here. And go away again. For the last time ever. I'll be graduated in June. Angus is going on from Holywell to the seminary. I wish him the best of luck and come home to you. And then? What is it? Nothing. Tell me. You won't come home to me. Nora. And if you do, you'll go away again to the seminary with Angus. Please. You're going to become a priest, Francis. Why won't you get that out of your mind? I can't any more than you can. I love you. And you love Polly, too. Of course I do, but... She just lives for the day you become a priest. It's all she talks about and dreams about and prays for. It's the reason you went to school with Angus instead of Willie. Because Holywell is a Catholic college. I'm sure that Aunt Polly would be very happy if I were to become a priest. In fact, I know she would. But there isn't a chance of it. How could there be when I feel about you the way I do? How strong will your feelings about me be when they come up against what Polly wants more than anything in the world? She's had her way with you. She's wrapped you around her little finger ever since I can remember. No, you're not being very fair to her, are you? No, I suppose not. Well, why don't you just wait and see? I'll try. But sometimes I get so afraid and so lonely. Francis! Francis. Francis, how could you wait until the last second to say goodbye to me when there's so much I had to say to you? Oh, I'm sorry, Aunt Polly, but there was a lot I had to say to Nora, too. It's been wonderful to be home. Well, take care of yourself. Write to me often and study hard. Of course I will. Francis, you've got the tickets. Come on. Be right with you, Angus. Goodbye, Ned. Thanks for everything and take good care of Aunt Polly. I'll do that. Goodbye, Willie. Good luck in your med studies and write to me. Francis, you'll get the next heart I dissect as a valentine. <laughs> Idea. Well, now, now, I'm not going off to the salt mines in Siberia. Goodbye, Nora. Goodbye, Francis. Francis. You'll miss the, the train, train Francis. Just a minute. Yes. Is everything there, Angus? Yes. Let me know if you want anything, Francis. Goodbye. Bye, Nora. Goodbye. Bye, Nora. Goodbye, 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 Nora.
During my instruction, I referred to the one true and apostolic religion. He saw fit to question this description. Well? My question was meant as a question, Father. I asked whether God set an exclusive value on creed, since it was such an accident of birth. The answer to your question is yes. Have you done any fishing lately? Well, I've been thinking I might try the glebe pool, sir. There's a big one there. There's nothing in the glebe pool. There's a big one there now, sir. Imaginary. If you've no further need of me, Father. Thank you, Father. Sit down, Francis. Sit down. You'll be out of here in another term. Isn't it about time you made up your mind about the future? Yes, I try to, sir. I think of it all the time. I've been appointed a rector of our San Juan Seminary in Spain, beginning next year. You'll be leaving Holywell. Yes. I'd hope that we might meet at San Juan next fall. I think you'd make a good priest. Thank you, Father. I... You seem confused, lad. You've got worries eating at you. Would it help to talk them out? Oh, it's just that I... Well, I know there's a vocation for me, Father. But I don't know where to find it. I can't go on letting Polly and Ned support me. How can I ever repay them for what they've done already? I'd be no help about the tavern. And besides, it's almost a year since I've been home, since last summer's vacation. And in all that time, so little word from any of them. And now, a letter from Polly asking me not to come home this year. She doesn't say why, just that it's best, and she begs me not to come. I feel there's something wrong that I ought to help. <laughs> I'm sure that if help is needed and you can help, there's none they'd rather ask for than yours. But how can I be expected to stay away without a reason? Oh, you cannot say that there is not a reason. I had my heart set on never leaving Holywell. You had yours set on going home. What do you say? Shall we both agree to let Almighty God have his way? Hmm? <laughs> You're in love with Nora, aren't you, Francis? You see, you actually saw that fish. Oh, yes, Father, I did. Well, then why aren't we after him, eh? Before he's gone. Here. Here's a rod. Yes, Father. Well, what are we waiting for? Thank you. Keep its head up and nap. Up. Up. Oh, careful. Careful now. Watch him, brother. Watch him. Watch him. Oh, oh the nab. Watch him, brother. The nab, what a funny, funny fisher you are. Oh, get your neck, boy. Get your neck. He's in ground. He's an ounce. Here he comes, lad. Get it ready, lost. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't object to your eating so little if it didn't emphasize the fact that I ate so much. <laughs> it was fine of the Lord, I think, to put all the little fishes in the brooks and to send me here to catch them. It's a lonely sound, that. When I was a homesick lad and heard it in the night, I'd imagine it was the cry of a lost soul speeding through eternity. My imaginings are less spiritual, Father. To me, it's the Southern Express, the only thing I have of home. It whistles for me, and tomorrow night it will whistle for them. Please understand, Father, I've got to go home. I do understand, Francis. If only Nora would write, if only she... You know, she objected bitterly to my coming back to Holywell. She thinks that I... Yes, yes, I know. I... I... Sit down a moment, Francis. I've got something to tell you. You've got bad news. Is it about Nora? I... Why wasn't I told? Because it wasn't easy to tell. Sit down, lad. How long is it since you've seen Nora? Well, it's been over a year now, I've told you. Mm. You told me she quarreled with you then, because she thought 
You were being made a priest here, despite yourself. Oh, well, she knew in her heart that that wasn't so. I have no way of knowing what was in Nora's heart. But it seems that after you left, she... Have any of your friends written to you about her? Well, I have only one friend, Willie Tullock. He's been away at medical school. Mm. He's at home now. At home? I, looking after her. But Nora changed a great deal, Francis, and all to the bad, I'm afraid. She became increasingly bitter, even with those who loved her most. There seemed little she cared about, her own character least of all. Until finally... Father, what is it you're trying to say? What's happened? A baby was born to her some six weeks ago. A little girl. She alone knows who the father is. She will not say. She's desperately ill. But it was her express wish that you were not to be sent for. Oh, I've often wished that I were a wiser man than I am, but never so much as now. I cannot tell you to do anything except what is in your own heart to do. You can still catch that train, Francis. God bless you, lad. to record that I became an immediate success as a priest. Alas, the facts were quite otherwise. I failed dismally in my first two curacies. There seemed to be little promise of success in my next, or ever for that matter, when one day there came a summons from the new bishop, the new bishop and my guardian angel of old, Hamish McNair. Francis, it does my old eyes good to see a priest so manifestly unprosperous as you. Well, I walked most of the way in the rain. I'm afraid I got a little wet. Too rebellious even to use an umbrella, eh? <laughs> Go over to the fire. I'll get you something warm. I'm not yet properly accustomed to my new dignity. I ought to ring and command some of the fine vintages used by all the bishops one reads about. <laughs> This is only whiskey. But then we're only Scotsmen, aren't we? <laughs> well, don't look so scared, boys. Sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Under these bishop's robes, there still beats the heart of McNabb, the master fisherman. Remember? <laughs> well, here. Here it is. You 
You've had a pretty thin time of it, haven't you, Francis? Thin's the kindest possible word for it, Your Lordship. Failure might be closer to the facts. Mm. Well, now, let's see. You've had two curacies since Holywell. At the first, Shalesley, you insisted upon establishing a dance hall. It was a recreation center, Your Lordship. There was a desperate need of it. If you could have seen the poverty and destitution of those people. At any rate, there was a rather serious disagreement between you and your superior. You were then transferred to Tyne Castle, to your home. There, your closest personal association was with an atheist. Willie Tullock. He's a doctor now, as his father was when he saved my life. Well, he's my oldest and dearest friend and one of the kindest men I've ever known. <laughs> Atheists have reason to be kind. Then Father Fitzgerald. He found you argumentative and frequently guilty of unorthodox doctrine. Nothing I did seemed pleasing to him. Just to Almighty God, eh? Certainly he cannot be too pleased with me. My father's house, there's so many mansions. Surely there's room for me. I've tried so hard, believe me, and failed so miserably. Am I so ill-equipped to give what's in my heart to give? It's strange. When I was a little boy, I, I imagined it was not in the least difficult to be a priest, that they were all infallibly perfect. And now you've discovered how frighteningly human we are. Hmm? Oh, to me, you have never been a failure. And I think you never will be. Oh, thank you, Your Lordship. But don't ask me why. I'm sure I couldn't say. Perhaps it's because I've always been partial to the stray cat who comes stalking down the aisle when everyone is yawning their heads off at a dull sermon. You're like that cat in a way. I haven't been able to take my eyes off you. And I can't help thinking you're in the church, not by chance, but for a reason. You can do with some cheering up, so I'll risk giving you a swelled head. You've got inquisitiveness and tenderness. You're sensible of the difference between thinking and doubting. You feel an excitement about your work that'll keep it from ever becoming routine. You'll never become what I call an ecclesiastic mechanic. No. I don't want ye ever to change. You understand, of course, I say these nice things to you because I want you to do something for me. Well, you've made it impossible for me to say anything but yes, Your Lordship. That's why I've been made a bishop. Now, this will call for great personal sacrifice. It'll mean a long period of training in language, customs, procedure. It'll not be an easy life. No, not a safe one. But I believe sincerely it is the life for you. The Society for the Propagation of the Faith has asked me to supply a volunteer missionary for China. Will you go? China? It'll mean leaving far behind you everything that is near to you now. Your home, your friends, Aunt Polly. Judy. Judy? Yes, Nora's little girl. She means a great deal to me. Of course. I'll be happy to go, Your Lordship. I knew you would. And you'll be a credit to both of us. Come to see me again before you leave. We'll pray for you. Thank you, Your Lordship. Oh, Francis. Take this, will you? It's a good thing to have. You never know when it's going to rain. different from the China of today was the country to which I came so many years ago. Exploited and abandoned by the world around her, starving and struggling to realize what was then just a hope, a dream, unity and dignity and a place in the sun. And so I came to China to 
the province of Chikau, a thousand miles from the sea, to my mission in the city of Pai Tan. I assume you've come to meet me. Yes, Father. I'm Hosanna Wong, your beloved the catechist. And this is my Christian wife, Philomena. How do you do? We have bearers on a chair if Father is ready. Well, how nice. It, it's such a lovely day, I'd rather walk. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my, my trunk is on board. Shall we go? Are we stopping here? Surely the mission cannot be far now. Here, Father, is the mission. Why has this taken place? The work of the devil, Father. It was a beautiful mission and cost much. But the good Father who is gone placed it too near the river, and the devil sent much wicked rain. But where are the people of the congregation? Why have they done nothing to rebuild their mission? Father must realize that for almost one year now we get no cash. You mean you were given money? Why? To buy rice, Father. How else could we bring you members? But among the 400 communicants listed on the book, surely there must have been many true Christians. If you mean those who believe without rice, yes, there were many. But as we told you, Father, they went far into the hills, to the Christian village. And those who have remained? Their faith left them when the rice gave out. And you? As soon as Father restores our lawful stipend of 15 taels per month, he will find us as useful as ever. <laughs> For that, we include the serving of Mass. And I think you should know that I cannot pay you any money. I should warn you that I understand almost everything you say. Also, I know what rice Christians are. I have no interest in them, whatever. Perhaps Father needs to understand more than the language of Petan. There is much animosity lately against the foreigners, particularly if they are without money. It would be wise for Father to have two friends of influence. 
Without them, it might be that the harm could come to him. While the ruined stable was suitable for my living quarters, it was not likely to attract many converts. Accordingly, I used part of my meager funds to rent a small room in the city. Bishop of Tynecastle, my lord. Truly, this is a most difficult task. There must be a way along which to carry God's grace to even these, these most unhappy creatures. If I do not find the way, it will be only because I have failed again. And promise you only that I will search for it to the end of my days. I have lived thus far in failure. If I am to die in it, and I want it to be here where only God and I will know. Who's there? Who are you? I am Joseph. Joseph? Yes, Father. When I was born, I was called Ta Ming. When I became a Christian, I demanded the name of Joseph at my baptism. And where were you baptized? Here, in this village, Father. Strange, I've not seen you before now. When the other father left, there were many Christian family who traveled to the Christian village of Liu. My family was among these. And why have you returned? Word came to us that you were here. With my father's permission, I left at once. No. No. Come in. Come in. Here, let me help. I can manage, Father. You seem exhausted. I'm a little tired. I have walked for five days and four nights. Oh, well, sit down, Joseph. Thank you. Sit down. Surely this miserable stable cannot be where Father lives. Well, those in Bethlehem were no better than this. You see, Father, together we will build a chapel again. And a house. I can make bricks and speak many dialects and cook and help with the school and care for the grounds. I am a most useful man. I cannot pay you any money. I have not asked Father for money. I want to serve you because there is work to be done. And I'm a Christian. I, I've been alone for so long. Perhaps without knowing it, my faith and trust have been shaken. Will you forgive me, Joseph? 
In the basket, I have some melons and some ducks and several dozen of eggs which I gathered along the way. Yeah, babe. Oh, you mean they were just growing wild, like flowers? They were alone, with no one to watch over them. I could not find it in my heart to leave them forsaken. I see you have a fine missionary instinct, Joseph. We must teach you not to apply it to other people's property. I brought some tea also, from home. Would Father welcome a cup? Cup of tea. You make me feel very humble indeed. I have so little that I can share with you. Father can share with me his privilege to work for God. Oil. Is it to rub on, Father? No, no, that's the drink. Joseph. <laughs> not bad. Have some, Father? No, thanks. I'm not thirsty. I think you should know. At the sight of blood, I faint like a woman. Willie Tunnock. Your holiness. It's amazing how religious you can make a man feel by fixing his bellyache. I'm sending you all my secrets and a book of instructions. Cure what you can and kill what you can't. Willie Tullock, M.D. and Heathen. P.S. For practicing without a license, I shall of course report you to the British Medical Society, the Pope, and my Chinese laundryman, Willie. Yes, Father. Do it but you. Let me remind you again, Joseph, that conversion is accomplished through faith and not kidnapping. Besides, after studying for three weeks, I do not feel up to replacing a human eye. Perhaps you could pretend to kill me of a broken arm. I could advertise it. No. Father is right. That would be dishonest. Perhaps if I really broke my arm. I appreciate the lengths to which you're willing to go, Joseph, but we have need of both your arms as they are. I cannot say, however, that the outlook is encouraging. You drag him in, Father, and I'll lock the door. Come right in, Mother. That's a bad cough. But just a moment, just a moment. Just drink this down. She's speaking Chinese? It's Cantonese. She said the medicine was very good and she enjoyed it. Well, tell her she's very welcome. However, she did not come here for herself, but on account of her granddaughter. Then why did she take the medicine? Because she did not wish to offend you, Father. I appreciate her delicacy. Does she know what's wrong with the child? Because <laughs> There is nothing the matter with this child that our medicine can help. Her trouble seems to be that she is a female. Well, she has that in common with all little girls. The old woman is going to die very soon. And she wants your sacred promise that you will care for the girl. 
Are there no other relatives? None. She said that if you don't take her, she will be abandoned and alone. Oh, surely there's someone who'll care for her. She's just a baby. A female baby. No one would want her. I have told her how much we regret that we cannot accept the child. Well, you shouldn't have, Joseph. It's a dream I've cherished ever since I arrived here. A school at the mission for children. But there is no mission, Father. And barely home enough for us. Someday the sisters are going to come. Teach them their letters and their catechism. How to play. Joseph, tell her that... Tell her that we'll watch over her granddaughter. Oh, no, please don't do that. Well, please. Oh, Joseph, make them get up, make them stop. Tell them they're very welcome, but please to stop. Please pardon my intrusion. Oh, come in, please. Thank you. I am here at the bidding of my cousin, the Mandarin, Mr. Chia. You will recall him. Yes, we were fellow passengers on the boat when I arrived. I've not had the honor of seeing him since. He has not been unaware of your presence in Pétain. I am to ask whether you will accompany me to his house. May I ask why? His only son, Chiao Yu, lies sick unto death. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. My cousin asks that you bring with you all of your remedies. Can you tell me what his illness is? In playing, the boy scratched his thumb. Upon no one knows what. As a consequence, his five elements have been disturbed. His body burns and grows thin. The lower humors have gained an ascendancy and float entirely into one arm, distending it and leaving it blue. Sounds like a very bad infection. Has it been treated? Three physicians and a Taoist priest are in constant attendance. Sacred herbs have been applied. Well, you must understand that I'm not a trained physician. I... I treat only the most simple disturbances. Shen Fu said that he'd come here to do good, and that his blessings were for all alike. That's true. My cousin asks only that you bring whatever blessings and do whatever good you can. To the physician and priest already there, you will be a foreign intruder, Father. I know. If anything should happen, the responsibility would not be theirs. Yes, I know. Chao Yu is an only son. His father is a Mandarin. His power is great and unquestioned. Joseph, I want you to start praying to St. Andrew the minute I leave. Don't stop praying until I get back. Oh, and uh, take care of them. Yes, Father.
basins. One of them is boiling water into cloth. And kai shui, and lam shui. You should want nourishment. Give him a cup of warm soup and nothing else. No treatments of any kind. It is my cousin's wish that we do as you say. It was most unexpected that Chen Fu would cut with a knife into the flesh of the boy. There was nothing else to do. That arm was filled with corruption. If it hadn't been removed, it might have spread throughout his whole body. Let us hope that corruption can be removed by cutting and squeezing. Let us hope that everything will be well. Of course. Bye, Mr. Powell.
morning, Mr. Bowen. Good morning. How's the boy? Shen Fu will know that better than I. can't be certain of anything, of course, but there seems to be little to worry about now. I'll stop in again this evening. I have been instructed to thank you and to say they will not be necessary for you to trouble yourself again. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Just a simple matter of changing and dressing. Even that will no longer be required. Thank you. My cousin, Mr. Chia, regrets having been incapable of expressing his gratitude in person. His grief has been such that he has chosen not to show it openly. And now that his son will soon be well, it is probable Mr. Chia will soon present himself once more in public. Good day. Good day, Mr. Fowler. Dear Lord, let me have patience and forbearance where now I have anchor. Give me humility, Lord. After all, it was only thy merciful goodness and thy divine providence that saved the boy. But they are ungrateful, and you know it. It will seem strange to the doll at first to have one leg almost as big as she is altogether. But like all women, she will soon be convinced that she would not have it otherwise. Have you given her a name? Anna. Anna is your name, because you came to us on the feast day of St. Anna. But what will you call your doll? Anna. You're becoming a very obstinate little girl. And besides, you eat too much. We will call your doll Victoria. No, Anna. <laughs> Joseph, you haven't won an argument yet. This little female is a victim of overeating, Father. Well, is it possible we have a Sunday afternoon visitor? Oh, uh, come in, please. Thank you. Uh, will you sit down? May I take the liberty of telling you who I am? I know who you are, Mr. Chow. Now, may I sit down? Yes, of course. To speak of first things first, my only son, whose life you saved, is well. Last week, he walked with me in the garden. This week, he is able to run with his friends and play. I'm very happy to hear that. For myself, there have been many matters to attend, much business to settle. But now, now I am here. Well, why are you here, Mr. Cha? Naturally, to become a Christian. You mean, have you come to believe in Christianity? In time, I will no doubt accustom myself to it. Well, Christianity is not a habit, Mr. Cha. Do you want to become a Christian? Well, I am here. Is it not, therefore, apparent that such is my wish? Not at all. Why are you doing this? You have done the greatest good for me. I must now do the greatest good I can for you. If I, as a Mandarin, accepted your Christian belief, all of Bhutan would follow, as inevitably as the day follows the sun. I'm sorry. I'm sure that you mean well, Mr. Cha, but you would not be doing good for me. You do not believe, nor do you desire to believe. My acceptance of you would be a forgery for God. Do you mean you reject me? Yes, I mean precisely that. And please, do not feel that I wish ever to make any demands upon your gratitude. You owe me nothing. Ah. 
I regret that I am not acceptable. I understand that this is so because I am unworthy. Nevertheless, perhaps there will be some way in which I... So? Father realized that he has turned on a mandarin? Well, I see no difference between buying a man's soul and taking it in exchange for services rendered. It has occurred to me to ask, has Shen Fu ever looked or walked upon yonder hill? Oh, yes, often. It's the most beautiful part of the countryside. The property is large in extent, more than 60 mu. It is called the Hill of the Brilliant Green Jade. It is mine. As I gathered as much. I uh, could not help but notice that the grounds and buildings of your mission are in a disastrous condition. Oh, well, we'll manage with God's help. I would like to help, too, in my humble way. I beg you to honor me by accepting as the property of your church the hill of the brilliant green jade. Mr. Cho. With all land and water rights and the rights to the clay pit, without restraint forever, I beg further that you accept the use of 20 of my workmen and the materials to accomplish fully any building you may wish to carry out. Are you serious? If I were not, I would be unworthy to look upon my son as his father. The deeds and legal papers will be delivered to you tomorrow. Rejoice in God my Savior. For he that is mighty hath done great things to me, and mighty is his name. Two years of planning and building found my congregation flourishing and my mission nearly completed, except for the eagerly awaited arrival of the sisters. Father Chisholm, please. I am Mother Maria Veronica. But, but you weren't expected until tomorrow. Well, uh, are we to trudge back to that miserable ship and wait? Please take us to Father Chisholm at once. Uh, I, but I'm Father Chisholm. I'm most distressed that you weren't met, I. One might have supposed some welcome at the end of 6,000 miles of travel. Well, please understand, the letter from Angus, uh, from Monsignor Mealy said distinctly that you weren't to arrive until the 19th. That's tomorrow. May I present my companion, Sister Martha, Sister Clotilde? Oh, how do you do? I can't tell you how sorry I am that the plans went wrong. I... Will Father have a show to our quarters? My companions are sadly in need of rest. Oh, but you, you, you... Certainly. If 
if you'll follow me, please. Wait and wait and while you're not too late. This is our schoolroom. And this is to be your house. I planned it so when we were building. Oh, it's lovely. It's very nice indeed. It will be a job of work keeping it clean. Oh, you'll have lots of help. The Christian women have been looking forward to you almost as much as I have. May I please? Reverend Mother, I... I planned it. Well, I thought perhaps we could all dine together tonight. By way of a special occasion. Thank you, but I think not. If we could be spared some milk and fruit, after we've rested properly, we shall be fit for work tomorrow. Could I send you nothing else? Nothing, thank you. May Lee, May Lee. Juchin, you go inside and do what you can to help. So very definitely, the 19th. Well, today's the 18th. Tomorrow's the 19th. Come in. Did you send the fruit and milk to the sisters? Many hours ago, Father. A half-cooked pheasant is of little good either to himself or to anyone else. What shall we do with them? Do with them? Joseph, have one of the women take this into Mother Maria Veronica. Say that, say that I'd like you to see it. Reverend Mother is in a schoolroom. At this hour, are you sure? I saw her go in. She was carrying a leather case for writing. Oh. Well, I'll take it into her myself. Uh, Joseph, will the pheasants keep until tomorrow night? They are in no condition to run away, Father. Good evening, Reverend Mother. Good evening, Father. Oh, please, sit down, sit down. My supply of ink was gone. I imagined I would find some here. Oh, there's our little schoolroom, please, you? Seems excellent. There'll be 20 children here tomorrow morning. I'm looking forward to meeting them. We have a fine dispensary. I've been hoping that you'll find time to assist me if with If you will let me know the dispensary hours, I shall be there. Well, I haven't much medical knowledge. But we've achieved the most amazing results with simple... What a beautiful photograph. Did you take this yourself? No. But you've been there? Yes, at Schloss Anheim in Austria. Schloss Anheim. Oh, I'm sure I've heard that name. It sounds historic. Is it near your home? Yes. Quite near. Hmm. How different it must be from my own home. Uh, from Tyne Castle. Oh, I don't mean just geographically, but living in all its aspects. For instance, the idea of a ruling class, of a rigid discrimination between an aristocracy Father and... Father Chisholm, I'm sure you understand how earnestly Sister Clotilde, Martha and I desire to work for the success of this mission. You only have to mention your wishes, and we shall do all we can. At the same time... At the same time, I trust you will afford us a certain freedom of action. Well, what do you mean? As you know, our order is partly contemplative. We should like to enjoy as much privacy as possible. Uh, take our meals alone, uh, maintain a separate establishment. Nothing else was ever intended. Naturally, your little house will be your convent. Then you will permit me to manage all of our convent affairs. Oh, by all means. Only, uh, be careful about money. We are very poor. Our order has made itself responsible for our support. We shall not require financial assistance. No. Doesn't your order enforce holy poverty? Holy poverty, Father Chisholm, does not require me to beg. I'll send you a note of the dispensary hours and of the church services. Good evening.
has just been here to see me, our peasant priest, dripping with good fellowship and very careful of his manner. His boots, however, were not much cleaner than they were this morning. Of course, Mother, you will know that every word I write is a sin against God. And I cannot help myself. I dread the future. Shut up in this isolated spot. Dedicated to serve certainly the lowliest subjects of God's kingdom and dedicated to a belief in their equality with me before God. I wanted it so. I have it so. As the weeks passed, my disappointment at being unable to win the friendship of our Reverend Mother was lost in my growing admiration for her efficiency and the manner in which the mission prospered through her efforts and those of her associates. Good morning, Hans. Good morning. Here, Momo. Oh, yes. Uh, have you brought your things? Yes. Our few humble possessions. Then uh, go to the small house. Sister Martha will show you quarters. Uh, thank you, Momo. Is that the couple you hired? Yes. I've had dealings with them. I know them well to my misfortune. And theirs too, apparently. They've described the incident to me. Well, I'd hardly call it an incident. To put it charitably, they're far from reliable characters. I find very little charity in the way you put it. And even less of Christian forgiveness. I would fail in my responsibility toward the mission and you if you I You have no responsibility toward me. If I did not warn you that they're a bad lot and advise you to get rid of them at once. I will not get rid of them. May I remind you of your promise that I am to be responsible for the management of my house? Father. Father. There is a man at the gates who desires to see you. Who is he? A most peculiar man. He speaks the same tongue as Father and insists that he will see no one else. Didn't he give you his name? Yes, Father. He said to tell you that he was the devil's number one boy. What? Yes. You've been drinking. Well, there's only one man in the world. But that's impossible. It couldn't be. The devil. Really? Oh. Fancy, my boy. What brings you here? What a wonderful surprise. Oh, it shouldn't be so surprising. After all, in almost 40 years, a man gets to know as much about Tyne Castle as he'll ever know. So one day, I set to wondering whether there was a hill. Behind the hill, I could see from the office window. I went to look. And by George, there was another hill behind that one. Well, with one hill after another, here I am in China and your sacred presence. Have you forgot your etiquette, Mom? Do the honors. Forgive me, Reverend Mother. This is Dr. William Tullock. Dr. Tullock's my oldest friend. I think it's only fair to tell you fancy is not to be blamed for me. And I, for my part, have long ago disclaimed any responsibility for him. I see no reason why you should want to, Doctor. I hope you enjoy your visit with us, and I'm sure that Father Chisholm will make you most welcome. I'm sure. And this is Joseph. I am most honored, sir. Hello, Joe. Well, well, we'll send for your luggage later. Let's all go in and have some tea. If you'll excuse me, I have some work to do. It was a pleasure, Doctor. The pleasure was mine, with I? Quite a woman. 
sure you won't have it up. No, thanks. I, Judy's a strange lass. Moody and perverse and unpredictable. A little like a mother, perhaps. Well, she'll marry one day, I imagine, when she sees fit. And maybe she'll find happiness in life. Happiness in life. It depends on what you do, what you give, what you get. I've given the world thousands of aspirin tablets. And I've acquired a taste for Irish whiskey. And I'll thank you not to use my maudlin self-pity as an argument to prove the existence of the soul. Well, why should I try to argue you into something you already believe? Now look, Francie. In the three days since I've been here... Uh, Joseph. Now, where on earth did you get that? Forgive me, Father. This evening I found it necessary to give Hosanna Wong a beating. Oh, so? His wife hit me with a broom handle. Then I gave her a beating, too. Equal rights for women. I agree. Despite my warnings, they have continued to say many unkind words about you. For instance, that Mother Maria Veronica is a great lady, while you are simply dust. Oh, we're all dust, Joseph. Surely we can put up with a few unkind words. Perhaps you, Father, who are blessed with tolerance and charity. But not I. Uh, I'm very displeased with you, Joseph. As punishment, you shall have uh, a holiday tomorrow and that new robe you've been wanting. The new robe? Shall I beat him again, Father? <laughs> no, no. Oh, well, Nikolai. Willie, will you excuse me, please? I've been asked to come to the sister's house at once. Of course. Could I be of any help? Oh, thank you, no. It'll be all right. Father Chisholm, thank God you're here. Those hypocrites, those low, lying thieves. Where are Hosanna and Philomena? Gone with our money and our silver and Sister Martha's ivory crucifix. They could have murdered us. But they didn't, Sister Clotilde. Where's Reverend Mother? Has she been told? At once, of course, Father. She had nothing to say. She went straight to her room. They should be punished, those miserable people, to steal from the church. It was my fault that your crucifix was stolen. I know how dear it was to you. Please accept this in its place if you can. It is not ivory, but is over a thousand years old and has always been one of the most precious possessions of my family and myself. Good night. Good night. Good night, Father. Good night, Father. Good evening, Chen Fu. Mr. Chia. Well, this is indeed a pleasure. It is good to see you again. May I offer you my hand in the fashion of the English? May I offer you a cup of tea in the fashion of the Chinese? Thank you, but I must decline. My little son waits in my chair. I have come hurriedly to pay my respects and to say farewell for a while. We are even now on the way to my summer home in the mountains. Summer home? But you've just come back from there. Autumn's practically upon us. It would afford me great happiness if you and the ladies who assist you would lower yourselves to be my guests. Well, your offers are very kind and generous on Mr. Cheer. But you would not leave Pai Tan and take your son to the safety of your summer home without an important reason. What is it? You wish me to, how is it said, come to the point. Exactly. Very well. As you know, the revolutionary troops, the soldiers of the new Chinese Republic have been in Pai Tan for some weeks. Yes, I know that. What you do not know is that some Imperial troops under General Wei have moved into the hills today. He has already issued an ultimatum of surrender to the Republican troops, and the ultimatum has been contemptuously disregarded. I see. What will happen now? General Wei threatened an immediate bombardment of the city. I cannot understand why it has not already begun. It strikes me, Shen Fu, that with the Imperial troops in the hills and the Republican troops in the city, your mission is inconveniently in the middle. Oh, I'm sure that our neutrality will be respected. It is a pleasant assumption, but in any case, would it not be wise to remove yourself and your female associates at once to safety? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chia, but I'm sure that none of us would consider leaving the mission at such a time. If you should change your mind... But then, you have a mind that is uniquely unchangeable. Again, in the fashion of the English, good night, my friend. I appreciate your coming, Mr. Cha. We're indebted to you once again. Good night.
head and what was that? Shooting. Someone shooting at us. Oh, no. It's just a good tilt. It's nothing of the kind. Imperial troops on the hill have opened fire on the city. I'm afraid it's the beginning of a battle. Oh, just a good tilt. I'm sure you realize that our conduct at this time will serve as an example for the Christian women. I'm going to the children. They'll be frightened. As soon as you quiet them, I wish you to leave one of the Chinese women in charge and come to the schoolroom. As you say. Sister Martha, bring with you any of the servants you think can be of help. Yes. Joseph, I want you to take one of the men and go into the city tonight. See that as many members of the congregation as possible come to the mission at once. They're to bring with them their bedding and whatever food they may have. May leave. You and the women will draw up a list of all the provisions in our stock room. We'll need it in the event it becomes necessary to ration food. Also the medicines. Sister Martha will supervise. Sister Clotilde, you will see to it that no change is made in the children's routine. Above all, nothing must be done to alarm them or make them feel in any way insecure. Any questionable decisions will be left either to the Reverend Mother or to me. Now, I think you'd all better get started. God has set a great responsibility upon us. We must all work hard together. It will be necessary to forget any personal differences. Of course. Father, some of the shells have landed in the city. There are many fires. The Imperial General has picked a strange way of winning the love of the people, blowing them to bits. We better see how bad it is, Willie. priest. But most of your congregation will soon be up here and safe. Forgive me, but what makes you think you're wanted down there at a time like this? I don't pretend that I'm wanted anywhere. But God's mercy is everywhere. I've got no right to quarantine it behind these mission walls. Major, the town is full of wounded and dying. There's a great danger of pestilence. Why is nothing being done? What would Chen Fu suggest? There's a British doctor who's doing everything he can, but we must have some of your men to help, and we must have a house to use as a hospital. I'm childish enough to contemplate helping my civilian brothers even without reward. But I cannot spare any of my soldiers. Man, you're fighting to liberate the Chinese people. These are Chinese who need you tonight to save their lives. <laughs> I cannot see the sense of bringing dying people back to life so that General Wei can again kill them with his cannon. Is the situation that hopeless? We have no artillery at all. By the time my promised reinforcements arrive, we will have been inevitably massacred. Oh, Shen Fu. When you arrive at your mission, you might say a prayer for us. No, I'm not going back to the mission. I'm going to the street of the best Major. What can you and your doctor do by yourselves? Whatever good we can, as long as we can. Wait. You will have your hospital, Chen Fu. The Imperial Judge is a coward and thief. We will commandeer his home, and I will personally kick down his front door.
Tell them to bring in the next one. And remember, one squad is to be detailed to the sole duty of scrubbing this floor continuously and with disinfectant. It is comforting to know that when we are hit, we will be the most antiseptic cadavers in Pai Tan. You must remember how close to godliness cleanliness is. Maybe so, but I've never seen godliness kill bugs. Uh, don't be shocked. It's a matter of religion. He believes in God. You probably count on Confucius, and I put my trust in prophylaxis. In time, as a patient for both of us. Better clear out this entire section. As you say, Doctor. That's not a pretty idea, Francie. But it's vitally necessary we dispose of those who have died. Under the circumstances, this is the only proper method. Under no circumstances can burning be called a proper method, Willie. Depends on the point of view. From where I stand, I see this village left without fresh water and proper sanitation. I see pestilence waiting to move right into these miserable hovels filled with unburied dead. Well, we have a responsibility to the living, too, Francie. Yes, we have. Well, it seems there's no alternative. You're sure that all the wounded have been removed? Yes, but it was not easy. They did not want to leave the dead. Will you join me, Shen Fu, in touching off our holocaust? You, Doctor? No, thanks. on its way up and that blasted gun has gone to bed. Another dawn is here and another night is gone. I'm going to write a book. Six days and nights in a Chinese abdomen. And I must be daft. I'm talking to myself. Hmm? Oh, silly. I must have dozed off. I don't know why it's silly seeing you've had no sleep in almost a week. Why don't you leave today's collection to the army and me? Go up in the hill and get yourself a bath in 400 weeks. Now, that would be a pretty sight. The man of God taking his ease safe from harm. But this is no time to think of appearances. Besides, who's to see you here in this abandoned outpost of humanity? We're not unseen anywhere, Willie. Kill yourself if you've a mind to, but keep your motives to yourself, because they just make me mad. Father Chisholm. What are you doing here? Last night, they fire on the mission. What? Was anybody hurt? How are the children? The children are all right, but a beautiful church, it was destroyed and eaten up by fire. Some of the men were injured when we tried to save the altar pieces. Uh, tell the Major I'll be back. Oh, Father, this way. And keep your head down. Praying for yourself, go right ahead. 
cupid's for me, you're wasting your time. All right. And the almighty's too? Well, we'll let him be the judge of that, will he? My respiration's down. My fever's up. And I'm deep in the valley of shadow. And fancy I still can't believe in God. Are you mad at me? Of course not. Are you disappointed that I won't let you save me? Your salvation will be your doing, Willie. And right. mine. Same when you. Get to your kingdom. Don't look for my name on the register. It would be fun just to meet by chance. Fancy. I never loved you as much as I do now. Because you haven't tried to bully me into heaven. You see, I have such an awful headache. Give me your hand. of my supplication. Because with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plentiful redemption. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Ghost. responsible for the shelling of the church. Late yesterday afternoon, several wounded soldiers made their way to our dispensary. I took it upon myself to admit them. There's nothing else to do. I would have done the same. It must be a great blow to you. See your beautiful church so wantonly destroyed. No one can destroy my church. I shall build it again. As long as I live, I shall build my church. Father, Father. Father, the Imperial Captain, the one who commands the gun is here. He demands that you talk to him. All right. see me? Yes. The General Way has decided to favor you with several requests. First, you will stop sheltering the enemy wounded. The wounded are beyond fighting. They can do nobody any harm. Second, General Way confers upon you the honor of contributing to his supply. Your first contribution will be 800 pounds of rice and all the American canned goods in your possession. We're already short of food. And I have no intention of permitting you to rob Third, us. Third, it is essential that all Chinese men be released immediately from your protection to enlist in the army of General Wei. And what will happen if I decline the honor of complying with these requests? You already have a slight indication. 
In less than half an hour, I will be able to reduce your mission and everyone in it into dust. Oh, I... Oh, I... You must realize that it'll take me a while to comply with all of your demands. How much time will General Wei permit me? Possibly until tomorrow. Provided that you deliver to me by midnight tonight at my gun position a personal offering consisting of tin goods and sufficient valuables to comprise a suitable offering. Well, it seems I have no alternative. I'll be at your gun position tonight. Good. I shall expect you. I warn you not to fail. You bet you. Joseph. Yes, Father. Tell the Reverend Mother I've gone to the city. Suppose, suppose it were possible to capture General Wei's gun. About 20 of my men are now explaining to their ancestors why it is not possible. I know. But... I understand several are being ministered to at your mission, for which I thank you. Shen Fu, if I could get near that dishonorable weapon, I would demolish it. But I cannot. There's a way to get near to it. I, I do not doubt your goodness. But permit me to question your ability to perform miracles. I've been ordered to bring food and money to the captain in command of the gun tonight before midnight. My friend, you are an undeserved gift from heaven. Well, I'm afraid I've forgotten about heaven tonight. Then concentrate closely on what I am about to propose. Shen Fu. It must be nearly time. Just 11.30. Do you understand exactly what is going to occur? Yes, we've been over it a dozen times. For the 13th, then, in this sack is cordite and one can of gasoline. When I fire into the gasoline, it will ignite instantly and explode the cordite. But before that, even before I raise my revolver, you must begin to move away from the gun. I understand. You must be well away, for the concussion will be extreme. Captain! After the Shenfu and I have left, you will count to 250, slowly. Then you and your men will follow us carefully. When the explosion occurs, you will attack successfully. That is all. Yes, sir. Light a torch now, if you will. Tang shall I? And for the love of your Lord in heaven and my perishable body, keep it away from this sack. Oh, then jump! I'm Father Chisholm. I was instructed to come by your captain. Of you? I brought you a load of tin goods, which I hope will impress you. And I brought you some money, too. Give it to me. All right. Would you hold this? I want some assurance that the mission won't be molested. Not only will the mission not be molested, but tomorrow we shall occupy it and place it under our protection. <laughs> You gave me your word. Stop chattering and give me the money. Yes, Father. We are all well and safe. 
and the gun. Is it finished? It is finished. And 32 of the enemy blown into little pieces. Never in my life have I seen such a lovely killing. One more like that, and you will force me to endure Christianity. The question is, how long will Christianity be forced to endure killings like that? My shattered leg had barely mended when word reached us that Angus Mealy, Monsignor Angus Mealy by now, was to visit us on a tour of inspection on behalf of the International Society for the Propagation of the Faith. Francis! Angus! Francis, my dear fellow. It's wonderful to see you again. Oh, it's a great pleasure to welcome you, Angus. What a wonderful day. What a healthy climate. Come in, come in. I see you've hurt your foot, old oh boy. Nothing serious, I hope. Well, children, thank you, thank you. Sister? Oh, uh, Mother Maria Veronica. Reverend Mother, how do you do? How do you do, Monsignor? Sister Clotilda. Sister Clotilda. Sister Martha. Sister Martha. How do you do? How do you do? Well, this is a splendid establishment, splendid. Yes, splendid. Now I regret I can't stay longer than today and tonight, but you know I must be on my way again tomorrow. In the meantime, let me fill every minute with memories of our beautiful mission. Angus, there's something I want to tell you. Later, my dear fellow, later. Let us steal these first moments to enjoy the happiness of reunion and companionship. Then, after a hot bath and a change, I... I... Francis, I... I don't understand. What has happened to your church? Well, we've had a few reverses, Angus. I'm not going to try and hide my disappointment from you, Francis. Frankly, I had my heart set on celebrating High Mass in your church. And your disappointment is no greater than ours, Angus. I'd even promised a lecture at our London headquarters. St. Andrew's Mission or God in Darkest China. It places me, it places all of us in a most awkward position. I'm truly sorry. I've tried to explain. Oh, I'm not reproaching you. It wasn't your fault, I know. Still, if only Reverend Mother hadn't antagonized that wretched general. She did exactly as I would have done. Would you have acted otherwise? Oh, no, no, of course not. But there are many ways of overcoming difficulties, Francis, and some are more satisfactory than others. We've had our own difficulties at home, too. The reorganization necessary after Bishop McNabb's death. Oh, no. Well, where aren't you told? Oh, I am sorry. Yes, he... he died in March of pneumonia. He was a very old man, of course, and muddled and past his best. He was succeeded by Bishop Tarrant, a most worthy choice. Well, we must take things as they are and face them. Now that I'm here, I'll do my best to get things straightened out. I've had quite some experience in such matters, you know. It might interest you to hear one day how a good I... priest, Francis. Oh, and now you've discovered how frighteningly human we are. I can't help thinking you're in the church, not by chance, but for a reason. Shall we both agree to let Almighty God have his way? Eh? I seem to be depressing you pretty thoroughly. What do you say to a nice, brisk walk? Then this evening after dinner, we can entertain the Reverend Mother and have a real round table parochial conference. Well, I'm afraid you're in for another disappointment there, Angus. Reverend Mother never leaves the sister's house after the dinner hour. Nonsense. You just haven't asked her properly, I'm sure. I took the liberty of sending her an invitation. She'll come all right. Come on, Francis. It isn't important, of course, but it's been pointed out that I am the youngest Monsignor in the Northern Diocese. <laughs> I've even been accused of having an overactive thyroid gland. <laughs> A glass of wine, Reverend Mother. No, thank you. Oh, but it's first rate. I assure you, Pale Amontillado. No? Francis? Yes, thank you. It's a little traveled, perhaps, since it came with me from home. 
You know, I must admit, China fascinates me. And I disagree violently with those of our world who still regard the Chinese as an inferior race. Truly, there are no limits to the benefits of a belief in God and <laughs> plenty of soap and water. Uh, your record's been truly remarkable, Angus. I understand you founded two new missions in Japan and a native seminary in Nantau. Yes, and I'm happy to say that all three are flourishing. Unfortunately for you, however, Francis, they've put quite a strain on our financial reserves. I can't see how you're going to rebuild your church. I'm, I'm afraid the society cannot let you have the money. I haven't asked for it. Now, if only you had been more successful with some of the better class Chinese, the rich merchants. If only your friend Mr. Chia had seen the light. Well, he hasn't, and he's given most generously. I'm not going to ask him for another penny. Well, that's your own affair. But I must tell you frankly, Francis, that on our charts at headquarters, I'm sorry to say that your convert rate is the lowest. I suppose missionaries differ in their individual capabilities. Oh, surely no one doubts your capabilities, Francis. It's just in the way you do things. Living personally in such poor style, eating in the, in the kitchen and all that. Well, you ought to impress the natives, make more of a show. But the Chinese hate that kind of ostentation. And priests who practice it are regarded as dishonorable. You refer to their own low heathen priests, I presume. Heathens are not always low, just as Christians are not always high. Many of their priests are good and noble men. Well, have it your own way. It's just struck me. I can still give that lecture in London. I shall make my subject the dangers and difficulties of the missionary field. God chastiseth his own. Does that idea appeal to you, Reverend Mother? I am sure that my judgment must mean very little besides your vast experience in such matters. And now it is time for me to go. May I escort you to your house, Reverend Mother? Maybe, and I can manage very nicely. You needn't trouble, Monsignor. Oh, no trouble at all, I assure you. And besides, you may have some problems more easily discussed away from Father Chisholm's presence. Father Chisholm is aware of all my problems. Well, in that case, we should discuss the Baroness, your distinguished mother, whom I had the pleasure of meeting in Vienna last year. Oh, thank you. Good night, Father Chisholm. Good night, Reverend Mother. Good night, Joseph. Good night, Reverend Mother. Be right back, Francis. Father, may I say something sinful? Of course not. You will hear it in confession anyway, because I'm thinking it. Joseph. Yes, Father. benefit of too much soap and water made the sherry bottle fall and break. Reverend Mother, goodbye. Sister Martha, Sister Clotilda, goodbye. Francis, it was really most generous of your friend, Mr. Chia, to let me borrow his chair. Be sure and thank him for me, won't you? Oh, he doesn't want to be thanked. He regards it as an honor. Yes, I suppose he does. Still, he finds it impossible to... Well, I shall never be able to fathom the Oriental mind. It's inscrutable, positively inscrutable. Francis, my boy, good luck and God bless you. Thank you, Angus. Come back again. I promise you a church in which you'll be proud to celebrate high mass. You know, you're practically an Oriental yourself as far as understanding you is concerned. I'm going to give up trying. You'll build your church. I can think of no way in which it will be possible. That's why I know you'll do it. Goodbye, Francis. Goodbye, Angus. All right. Goodbye. Ah! Goodbye.
May I speak with you? Oh, oh please excuse me. I didn't notice. I don't want to disturb you. Not at all. As you can see, nothing for me to do. I've come to tell you something, and it, it isn't easy for me. Please sit down. Oh, thank you. From our first meeting, I have behaved shamefully and sinfully toward you. I want you to know that I'm most bitterly sorry for my conduct. Believe me, no apology was ever more abject than mine. Nor has anyone ever been less worthy of forgiveness. You needn't, please. please. It's easier for me to speak now. It becomes easier with every word. How strange that the moment of my greatest humiliation should bring with it the only peace I've ever truly known. I was born into arrogance, father, and taught contempt for those who were not. How could I hope to live by the word of God, which is the same for all men? From the beginning, your presence tortured me. I knew that yours was a true humility, and that mine was a duty. I resented your deep and honest compassion, because mine was difficult and filled with doubt and pain. Last night, I intended to ask Father Mealy to send me away. But as I sat in your kitchen, as I heard him humiliate you and slight you, as I felt the magnificence of your faith and the courage in your heart, as, as I saw you reject the worldliness of this priest who is unfit to entice you. Oh, forgive me, Father. Forgive me. Pity me. There's nothing for which I have to forgive you. I'm so glad you no longer dislike me. You know, we're all children to God. And with his help, we'll work and mature. The 10 years that passed were fruitful, peaceful, None noticed in their going, as passing years should go. I would like to note of no possible interest to anyone that they treated me personally with exceeding kindness. Except that is for increasing difficulties with my injured leg and a diminishing ability to see much further than the tip of my nose. My personal joy was a workshop, outfitted for everything from mending school benches to separating beeswax from honey. The beeswax would become candles for my church, and the honey would go to my children, and someday to my children's children. Two hundred faithful souls were in my congregation, and not a grain of rice in any of their prayer books. Our new church was but one of the many debts we owed to the thoughtfulness of Mother Maria Veronica and the generosity of her family. Some of the older girls were already novices, and others were ready to go into the world. This world that I will always maintain is closer to heaven than we think. Fresh honey today, my friends, fresh honey. Oh, it's a pity that none of you like it. Joshua, tell me, which would you rather do? Learn your catechism or eat honey? Eat honey. <laughs> eat honey. Well, God loves you, Joshua, for telling the truth. For that, you shall have a double portion. How can we restore discipline? They'll all be jealous of Joshua. Well, it's very simple. Give them each a double portion with Joshua's compliments. Has Joseph brought you the news? What, that he intends to marry? Well, he's the last to know. That girl's had him helpless for over a year. I was referring to something less joyous. Another mission has been opened in Bhutan. Oh? They have rented a fine house and have a great deal of money. Wow. Uh, American, of course. Yes. It is their intention to build an enormous establishment with schools for both girls and boys, playgrounds, and a hospital with resident doctor. Oh, sounds extremely beneficial. Uh, what denomination is it? It's uh, Protestant, the American Methodists. 
You know, I remember when I was a little boy and used to go berry picking. I always resented the other little boys who found the same bushes that I did and insisted on picking the berries. I knew that they had just as much right to them as I did. And yet... And, uh, what are you going to do about these little boys? Do? I shall put on my good suit, take my umbrella, and call upon them. Father Chisholm, I took the liberty of calling to welcome you to Baytan. Oh, well, won't you come in? Thank you. You'll have to forgive the way things look. We're not even unpacked yet. Dr. Fisk, that's my husband. Who is it, Agnes? He's in there. It's a caller, Wilbur. Well, uh, have him or her come in. If you don't mind. Well, it'll be my pleasure. Well, how do you do? I'm Father Chisholm. Welcome to Baitan, Dr. Fisk. Thank you. I've heard a great deal about you, Father. <laughs> well, I, I don't know whether I should return your thanks for that or not. Oh, you should. You can be well proud of your reputation. Well, frankly, I'm surprised that I have any at all. Well, news travels amazingly fast in China, and reputations are made and unmade just as quickly. Mm -hmm. Won't you sit down, Father? Thank you. May I? Yes, thank you. We're still all alone in the house, but perhaps I can fix you some tea. Oh, no, don't bother, please. It was really improper of me to call unannounced. I have a splendid establishment here. Well, we hope to make it one at any rate. Tell me, Father Chisholm, do you resent our coming here? What justification could I possibly have for such a feeling? None, of course. But we know, don't we, Agnes? Well, in a way, you see, once we'd been up country all by ourselves for nine years. And you've been here a great deal longer than that. And then another missionary came. Of course, he wasn't a Catholic. But I'm afraid we did feel a little... Frankly, we resented his coming, Father. You know, sometimes I wonder how the Christian faith must appear to the Chinese mind. With all the different sects all crying at the same time. Come over here. This is the one. This is the true one. We've seen a great deal of it. We're old campaigners. Over 20 years in China. Over 20 years? It's been a long time. We're originally New Englanders from Maine. Both of us born, reared, married in the same town. Ever been to Maine, Father? No. Well, it doesn't sound like much. Little white wooden houses, birch trees, huckleberries, lobster. It's a long way from here. This is our son, John. He was taken when he was at Harvard, just before he went to Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar. He has a fine face. Is he still in England? Yes, he's doing settlement work. Right now he's at a place called Tyne Castle. Tyne Castle? Why, that's my home. Have you ever been there? Oh, yes, last year, for two weeks. Oh, I have a family there of sorts. That is, an aunt and a daughter of an old friend. While we were there, we had the pleasure of meeting the rector of Tyne Castle Cathedral, Monsignor Mealy, Angus Mealy. Do you know him? Why, yes, very well. We were boys together. Splendid man. Oh, splendid. I thought him, uh, uh, well, just a shade formal, would you say? Uh, not formal. Uh, stuffy. Did you say stuffy? Decidedly stuffy. Agnes, put that tea on the fire. Father Chisholm and I are going to settle down to a nice visit. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nice. <laughs> well, thank you for your hospitality. And once again, welcome to Baytown. I can't tell you how happy you've made me by your friendliness. And, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm not a bad doctor. Let me be of some help to you. Well, we'll help each other. Right. Mr. Cha, happy to see you. Am I right in assuming that the father has just encountered the newly arrived holy man and his woman? Yes, they're American missionaries of the Protestant sect. Hmm, our city seems to attract more than its share of goodness. For myself, 
I cannot imagine any mission garden more pleasant to walk in than yours. Thank you, my friend. I remember that when Father came here many years ago, he received much ill treatment. It may be that I will look with displeasure upon these new missioners. Who knows but that a series of misfortunes will befall these worshippers of the false god and force them regretfully to depart. They're not worshippers of the false god, Mr. Chow. It's the same true god that I serve. Truly, my skull is thick. I am incapable of understanding. Well, each of us travels his own road toward the kingdom of heaven. Though I may think another is to be wrong, still I have no right to interfere with his choice. Is it demanded of the true Christian, then, that he be truly tolerant of others? He is no Christian who is not. Incredible. I would like to discuss this amazing doctrine in more detail. My uh, rickshaw has room only for my own miserable body. Will you lower yourself to permit me to walk with you? It'll be a great honor. I have adopted your custom of greeting people by the use of the hands. Perhaps in time, I will find walking equally bearable. <laughs> it is only when I look back upon the pages of this journal that I realize how time flashed across me. How the years tumbled into my lap almost too fast for me to tell one from the other. How many years? Ten? Twenty? Enough at any rate for me to know that I had grown old in my exile. I was reminded of this everywhere I looked. Joseph, for instance, with three sons as old almost as he was in that dark hour when he came to me. Now that the time had come for me to go home, I spent my days in memorizing every face, every stone, every tree of my beloved mission, as if in this way I could carry them with me. Two priests had been sent to assist me and to serve in my place after my departure. Father Chow was a gentle young Chinese in the college at Pekin. Father Craig was a young but not so gentle American who had been famous at Notre Dame University for playing American rugby football. Sister Mary had come from Australia after Sister Clotilda died. Father? Take it away. It's time for you to drink your milk. Just what is the object of this treatment? Get me to move like a cow all the way home to Scotland? Just put it down in front of him, Sister Mary. I'll see to it that he does as he is told. And why must I do as Wilbur Fisk tells me? Because he's your friend and your doctor and knows what's best for you. Well. Well, after tomorrow, I'll be free to decide for myself what I shall eat and drink. I don't want to go. I don't want to leave here. Honestly, there is no one here who is content to see you go. It's difficult to remember that you've been recalled for your own benefit. It's difficult to think of anything but that we shall miss you so much. Well, I'm afraid I've reached the age when it's easier to part with the dead than with the living. A great part of my life shall stay behind with you. My life has been preoccupying me lately, now that it's almost over. I've taken to rereading my journal. Certainly a typical old man's weakness. Mm, all out of proportion of the events of our lives to the words with which we describe them. No one's ever really been able to write pain or love or fear or God as well as we can feel them. Oh, here's a picture of Andrew. Julie's little boy. He's, uh, how do you say, uh, a bunny lad. Oh, why, he's bunny. He has that from his grandmother, from Nora. What a strange continuity of unhappiness that was. First Nora, then Judy, who lived and died as wretchedly as she was born. And now Andrew, deserted by his father and wanted by no one but me. Who takes care of him? Well, the woman who looked after Judy. Polly left some money, and I sent what little I had. I've never been able to send for him. 
I had to reckon with the possibility that he might arrive to find me no longer here. Now that I'll soon see him, I realize how vain it is of me to think that it matters much to him either way. Well, here's an item of history. January 21st, 1935. Angus Mealy is now the Bishop of Tynecastle. It was inevitable. I must say that I was rather pleased with my reaction to the news. I would have been so disappointed if I'd been jealous. But I wasn't and I'm not. I'm truly happy for Angus. I'm sure he is too. You see, I've long been aware of the difference between Angus and me. Angus is a man of great presence and great charm. At ease everywhere and with everyone. I've had scarcely more than Oh, six friends in all my life. And those, except for one, were humble folk. I suppose it should make me sad to think of how much he's made of his life and how little I've made of mine. I've bumped my head so often and so hard in my strivings after God. I mean no disrespect to your bishop. It is my personal opinion that you are closer to God than he. Twilight's come earlier these days. The summer and I are almost gone. And how shall I write this latest, saddest entry of them all? On this day, I said goodbye to Reverend Mother Maria Veronica. How does one say goodbye to a friend with whom one has shared disappointments and accomplishments of almost a lifetime? We'd worked together for so many years, through revolution, pestilence, famine, and poverty, and had come to know each other very well. When I insisted that I didn't want to leave my mission, she made me foolishly happy by encouraging my rebellion. And yet both of us knew that we could not consider our own preferences against the manifest wisdom of the appointment. And that, to quote the wisest man I've ever known, we would let Almighty God have his way. And may that Almighty God watch over her and bless her keep her always. We hadn't organized it, they'd have run wild. You wouldn't want to riot the day you left. Riot? Why? Listen to that. It's my favorite hymn. of honey for each child, see? Yes, Father. Goodbye, my friend. 
Goodbye, father. Goodbye, Shall you. Goodbye, father. God bless you. Well, Anna, still my number one girl. And which little Anna are you? She's Anna number three. Joseph? Father. Reverend and worthy disciple of the Lord of Heaven, it is with the utmost, the utmost anguish that we die children, that we die children, we die children, Thank you, Father. It's no use. What I was supposed to say is written on the scroll for you to read. Twenty times I have said it perfectly before my wife and children. But how could I speak to you in words I have memorized like a parrot or a child? There is no one here who has not his own memories of you and your love and your goodness. Let them each speak in their own hearts for themselves. As for me, dear Father Francis, I cannot speak. I have no memories other than those of you. I have had no life other than yours. Joseph, my oldest and most loyal comrade. My good friends, what can I say? I have neither the talent nor the knowledge to find words that would express what is in my heart. You would only hear the mouthings of a sentimental old man mortally afraid of making a fool of himself. Will you let me bless you all? Lord, let thy most benevolent blessing fall upon these thy children. And through thy grace, Bring to them peace and contentment to the end of their days. Thank you. Good morning, Father. Mm -hmm. No. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you slept well. As a matter of fact, I didn't sleep at all. Your journal was on the bookshelf by my bedside, and I must confess, I spent the night reading it. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. If anything, I'm flattered. I should imagine that the memories of a life as ineffectual as mine would guarantee sleep. Ineffectual? It is not to have known you, Father. Uh, goodbye, Monsignor. You, you won't forget to mention to Angus, I mean his grace, about the... There is nothing I will say to the bishop that will in any way alter your position here. Or your hopes for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Father Chisholm. Thank you. Goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye, Father. Bye. Well, Nan, don't stand there with half the morning. Go and get the rods. <laughs> Come along, boy. Wasn't it just fine of God to make all the rivers and fill them all with little fishes and then send you and me here to catch them, Andrew? Hmm? Oh.